Welcome to this video tutorial about how to revise sociology part one. I had that much I wanted to say, I decided to do it in two parts. So this video is all about how to revise for your sociology exam, in particular, how to revise the content, the AO1 stuff. With less than 65 days to go, A-level paper one is on the 22nd of May, and even less if you're doing the AS paper, that is on the 14th of May. And one thing you are not going to do is panic or ignore it. If this is you, comment meme in the comment section below. So revision, what is it? Your teachers keep saying, right kids, you've got to revise. But I am guessing that some of you don't really know what that means. I mean, you might not have done much at GCSE, somehow you did okay. Um, but doing A level is a little bit different from GCSE. And um, I thought that I would include the definition of what revision is and it says rereading a subject or notes on it in preparation for an exam. Now I have a bit of a problem with that definition because this is actually the least effective way to revise. The amount of students that say to me when I ask them, how are you revising? And they say, oh, I'm just reading over my notes. And I'm like, nah. so what you need to do is get the balance right. You need to make sure that you are revising content, but also practicing exam questions. And one way that you can do this is with the revision power hour. Now, I have already got a video about this already, so please check it out. So this video, I'm going to break it down what you can actually do in steps two. And then the next video is how you can start to incorporate what you have revised into step three, practicing the exam questions. So step two, revisit, revise, review the content. So how are you actually going to do this? Well, this can be anything. What it's not is rereading your notes or a textbook or just reading your flashcards. That is what you're not going to do. So instead, you can do anything like the flashcards, the mind maps, the knowledge organizers, the revision website, the quizzes. But what you must do is actively try to retrieve it. So idea number one, flashcards. And this is the three pile method. This is not my own idea, so I'm not taking credit for it, but it is a cracking way to prioritize your revision. So some students absolutely love flashcards. Our department makes our own flashcards out of A4 paper, different coloured and they cut it up into eight and students can get as many as they want. The manager absolutely loves it. She, he pushes students to use flashcards. He's always popping in saying, who wants flashcards? And he wants students to create their own and he's always asking. So much so, the students call him Flashcard Dan. Anyway, that is just me digressing. What you should be doing with the flashcard is prioritising them and do this by creating piles or you could have three trays like I've put on your screen. So as you go through the flashcards, the ones that you know super well, you put into tray number one, the smiley face, yay, because you know those. The ones that you are sometimes okay with or you just need a little bit of a prompt, you stick in the middle tray. And the ones that you don't have a diddly clue, you pop that in the sad face tray. And what you do is you spend more time on sad face and you keep revising this or revisiting those cards until they can move up a tray. This is perfect for isolating your revision. You can even do it with topics. So you could list your topics, for example, theory of education, educational policies, class differences in achievements, gender, ethnicity. Allocate the tray based on your confidence level. So then you can focus your time on the topics that fall into the sad face. Now, if creating flashcards is not for you, this app does it for you and it's even better because when you do the learn it, the algorithm sorts the content that you are learning. It keeps adding in the ones that you keep getting wrong. So a little bit like the three pile method, but it's on an app. And if you are already using Quizlet and you love it, comment the word Quizlet in the comment below. Idea number two, mind maps. Now this is perfect for seeing a topic at a glance and see how ideas might fit together. So this is perfect for something like explanations for crime or education. You can make 
cracking links between the explanations, such as how the home background of a working class student might interact with an in-school factor, such as teacher labelling. You can show how they overlap. Now, the problem with this is that you might spend too long on it and not enough time trying to retrieve the information or apply it to the exam question. So a little bit of a tip that I've come across is to set yourself a timer. Now, one of my students for my tutor group shared this fab app. I absolutely love it. It sets a timer, which also stops you from using your phone. It's called the Flora app. If you're using it, type Flora in the comments. When you start your study session, you plant a seed that grows into a tree. But here it is. If you leave the app to check social media or play games, the tree starts to die. I love the fact that you can even coordinate with your friends as you don't want to be the one that kills the tree. If the mind map thing is not structured enough for you, do a knowledge organiser. There are quite a few out there for free. So here is one that I found off Shortcuts TV. The link is there and below. And what it'll do is it'll organise a topic and it'll give you the prompts that you need to do for each section. So this is perfect for also topics at a glance. The same pitfall again, don't spend too long on this without trying to retrieve it, turn it over, what can you remember, or apply to exam question. Lastly, make your revision personable. If you struggle to learn studies, find out an interesting fact about them, or add an image. Um, it's, you know, it's easy to do. So for example, you can find out about the sociologist who was doing the research and what was really making them tick. So someone like Tony Sewell started as a teacher in a London school. He then was appointed by Boris Johnson to chair an inquiry into London schools. He received a CBE for his services to education. And a lot of his research is centered around black students and achievements. So what you do then is when you think of the name, you see the person as well. And hopefully that will make it a bit easier for you to retrieve it. So this has covered some of the ways that you can revise your content for sociology to help you along with step two. The next video will be focused on step three, practicing the questions. So there you go. Some revision strategies that you can have a go at. Click subscribe if you like it, the bell for notifications, like if you've gained something from it and by all means um, comment if you've got something to say. Massive thank you for watching. All the links are below. Um, check them out and have a great evening. I hope I've inspired you to revise.